Hey, Jay. Oh my god. I'm here for the session. What? Look, it's Sean Hurley. He just showed up out of nowhere. Hey, I, I left my base here yesterday. Is that, oh, was that cool? Yeah. Cool. Totally. Wow. Wasn't expecting that at all. What's up? So, Sean Hurley's like one of my favorite bass players to get to play with, and he was gracious enough to come over and uh, do a session specifically for my YouTube channel. We get to do a lot of sessions together where it's just bass and drums and we're tracking for another artist. So we thought it would be fun to take you through basically what we do in a session like that. There's a ton of great Sean-isms, truth bombs, and little nuggets of wisdom here and there. He's played on so many of my favorite records. It's funny because we've played together a lot over the past few years, but we've never really gone this deep on talking about what we're actually doing. So this was even a very educational video for me to make. It was a real treat to get to hang out with him and talk about what he really does. So this is great for drummers, bass players, producers, artists, everyone. Also, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm. Thanks. So what are we doing here today, Jake? <laughs> Funny you should ask! Actually, this is a song we just made up because so. there was a certain vibe we wanted to uh, demonstrate. Simple, but groovy. Simple lines intertwining. Intertwining. Tell me about your snare, Jay. I just got my deep snare out here. Eight by 14, wood something or other. A Little bit of muffling on it. Does the thing. Righteous. Slight snare decay. I didn't choke it. Sometimes I choke the snares on purpose. Ah. But if you listen, I let it a little looser. Oh, I hear that. So you get that slight decay. A little sizzle. Pairs well with a flat wound P bass. What do you got going there? This is the non-signed signature bass. Flat wound P bass will give you a certain character. It never disappoints, especially something with that high 90s tempo. It's meaty. I never thought about that. Tempo matters. You would maybe pick a different snare depending I mean, on a tempo. This tempo, this snare, it's this a, envelope? It's all about envelopes. Yeah. It is. Attack, decay, sustain, release. There's oh, a yeah. lot of videos out there. All I know, that bass, this snare, match mm -hmm. made in heaven. Ready? Nope.
How'd we do? That was fun. That was cool. Roll credit. Sean, while we're sitting here and you're tuning up, if you're out there watching this video right now and you're going, they're not doing anything hard. They're doing stupid that's, stuff. That's easy. It's baby games. This right? is child's play. Child's play. So simple. But it's hard. This is not easy to do. I can see that you're working. I'm working hard over hey, here. Yo, same thing. Fundamentals, man. Easier said than done. Speaking to bass players and drummers out there, how do you conceptualize this kind of groove? Because it's really simple. What's your concept here? Well, I'm trying to think. So when you're playing something simple, it's got to sound good and it's got to feel good because you got no other covering fire. No other things were like, hey, look at this, hey, blah, blah, blah. When you play fast, you can play it perfectly, but sometimes it goes by, it's hard to read. Like, was that right? So you review it, oh yeah, it was perfect. But when you're playing this slow or this groovy or with this, this many holes and gaps, every time you land, you've got to be dead on, or at least it's got to feel good. What's the syncopation that I'm going to be thinking about even if I'm not playing it? Are you thinking eighth notes? I'm thinking sixteenths. Are you thinking sixteenths? With, with a little swing, trying to get the shoulders going. More broken up. Just something imagining somebody's playing some little footsteps some in the dark. Shake. Sure. Right. Exactly. If you got that undercurrent going, then you can feel confident to play boom, 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 get. Oh, oh. It's something about being committed to something simple is so much better than playing something simple while you're trying to think of something more complex to play. I think that's the, the benefit of like, you know what? I know that this simple thing is gonna be where I hang my hat. So let's just dig into it and make it feel good. And it may be like, oh, we get it at the end of the take. So we go start again and pick up where we left off. So take three is the money or take four. Cause we're like, you gotta invest in yourself. You really have to be committed. If you're thinking about playing or you're waiting for your solo moment, you're not committed. My teacher, John Von Owen, he said, if you ever think of playing something, don't. don't. <laughs> I totally buy that. We're not really thinking of what we're playing. We're just playing like, does this feel good? If so, don't disrupt it. You should be able to drop in at any time. Whatever groove we're setting sail on, it should be the same. It should be landing in the same spot. It should feel good. Measure three should be as groovy as measure 27. That's right, the groove is still going at this moment. Right. I'm still grooving on it. Mm -hmm. If you're not dancing, you're not grooving. Same thing on drums, I'm just trying to find something that feels good and commit to that feeling. Which I think is more challenging for drummers. Often it's like, if you're not giving me a show, maybe I don't believe that you're awesome. So it can be more challenging for you to like, no, I have everything I need between the hat, the kick, and the snare. And I can do everything with that if I'm just committed to excellence. Fundamentals, I think of sports every time this stuff comes up. Hike the ball, get it into the hands of the quarterback, and make an easy play, yep. and you will win games. But if you're going for a Hail Mary every time, like, what are we talking about? What are yep. we doing? We're messing it up. I'm more of a baseball guy, so I'm always thinking about baseball. We're going for base hits here. Base hits. Hits. You don't need to impress anyone with your fills. Early on, I played with some guys that could do amazing fills that would wow you, but then when it was like, okay, everybody's warmed up, let's play the song, and it was like between beat one and two, I was like, oh, this sucks. Ever since seeing that, you know, 20 something years ago, I was like, I gotta be able to be awesome at the simple stuff. We can keep searching forever to try to increase our abilities and get better and have better ideas and stuff, but if we can't, perfect the simple stuff, yep. I got nothing to offer. I should add though, when we talk about feel and time, I'm not literally trying to play like a robot. That, 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 that. That doesn't feel good. No, sometimes we might get a little tiny bit ahead, might get a little bit behind, might be playing right in the middle. If we do it together, subtle uh, discrepancies can be, it's, it's what makes things human. That's yeah. why you can tell when something's been cut and edited versus performed. Yeah. So. And plus, I can also zoom in. I'll do this on my screen for everyone. I'll zoom in on like a kick drum and your bass note. That's where the money. A lot of people think the bass and the kick drum have to hit at the exact same time, but that's not the goal. The goal is to make a feel. And again, it's the envelope. So a lot of times you see the kick drum happen 
And then you see the bass note happening after that. Just a little bit. This is like happening in, in milliseconds, but you hear right. the bass note that came in just after the kick transient. Yeah. Okay, real quick, I also want to add that this is not universally true. Like, the bass is not always going to be right behind the kick drum. If you listen to a lot of classic jazz recordings, especially like with Ray Brown, he's clearly playing on top of the beat, slightly ahead. And that's what makes it swing. That's why it feels so good. It's all about the feeling, right? Every style of music has its own feel. So just talking about this one specific groove that we're doing here. And if we miss a note here and there, whatever. Well, listen to the old records. You have to do a lot of takes to get it perfect or you cut in. So we use the benefit of technology. If there's one errant kick or one errant bass note, I let's know. correct it. It's no shame in that. Save. Here we go. like it. It felt good to me. And then there was some nice moments where we didn't fill at the same time. Like one of your fill moments, I could kind of sense it coming, so I decided like, don't go up because you were going to do something more powerful with the Tom thing. It's in there. And I was like, oh, I'm glad. It's like trying to walk in this door at the same time. I think that happened because you had just done something. Right. I was like, I know Sean's not going to play something in and this hole. Boop, boop, da, doom, doom, I doom. wouldn't say it's that thinking about it. There's like right. a nonverbal thing that happens. Right. It's feeling it. You got to make intuitive decisions while you're playing. Right. That's what's happening. Peter Erskine, I used to take a lot of lessons with oh, him. Oh, who is that? He played with this guy named Jocko, who, by the way, he... <laughs> didn't write out any of his solos. He improvised. I believe He knew that. how to improvise. Yeah, he was a great yeah. improviser. Peter once, there was a great Jocko line. He said, hey man, 
Stop thinking so much and just concentrate. <laughs> that is kind of perfect. Yeah. Concentrate on playing so that you wipe out everything else. You don't yeah. think, you just play. So thank you, Peter, for that bit thank of wisdom. You, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Jocko. So that was like our third take. That was actually our second take. We could do another one and try to beat it. Somebody was happy, I know. I know it's cool and it's in there. If someone said, oh, you can do another one if you want to, I always like to do one more. You're playing with house money. If you don't beat it, then skip it, whatever. You might get a great moment. Sometimes you can get that one notch up. I also just love the idea of like, this song is just the Linear. same feeling yep. from beginning to end. Hypnotic grooves have their place. Yeah. And if yep. you can't do it, that's a, a gap in your your toolbox. You know, you listen to like old Stax recordings. There's like no fills. Steady groove. No, exactly. they don't do anything crazy. You can't say that across the board, but. Think of Green Onions or stuff. It's like if anybody had tried to get slick while the soloist is playing, it's like it's going to break yeah. the hypnotic thing. Yeah. Do, bo, do, 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 yeah. Do. Just let it go, man. Like even in this song, I'm not playing anything fast or no. busy if it's a fill. <laughs> Right. It all stays in that that feeling, that pocket of eighth notes, and maybe some sixteenth notes. My sixteenths uh, are probably more ghost stuff. Mm, yeah. I just bleed it, but anything that an actual note is an eighth note. You want to coast on a groove like that at a tempo like this, like you got to diagnose what does the song need. We're we're just trying to illustrate a thing. This is like a linear thing, so like play by those rules. Hypnotic, linear, don't try to be obtuse at any moment. Don't try, don't make it hard. You know, we're not always playing for other musicians. And in fact, often we're not. Don't try to make it more complex than it needs to be. You've already done all the study. You don't have to prove your worth and your musical education in every song. Should we try one more to beat it? Let's do one more. Ready? Yep. Here we go. Here we go. One more take. One more take. That house money take. Oh, it's a money take, all right. Ready? Yep.
Maybe. I thought that was great. I really believed in it. It's all about just getting to the essence. Yes. The core! Harnessing a groove. Sean. Jake. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. For joining me. For inviting me. We did it. That's all I got. All right.